I really like the mass on the spring question because it forces people to keep track of the energy they, ha they have in a system. Looking to the formulas we have on the right here, the first formula is a force formula. It says force equals Hooke's constant times the extension. But the next three formulae relate to energy. And it's interesting because in a system uh, such as a mass on a spring, energy can either be in the form of spring potential, kinetic, or gravitational potential. And if it is, well, an efficient spring, we're not going to lose energy. And if this is done in a vacuum, we're not going to lose any net energy. So if you take this system at any point in time and you add up these three values, you should get the same thing. And we're going to use that fact to solve the question of a 10 kilogram mass on this green spring. I'll set it up now. The green spring has a Hooke's constant of 400 newtons per meter. And the first thing we want to work out is what is the extension of the spring, since you can assume this spring before we hung this mass on it was actually a little bit shorter. The extension of the spring. Then we'll work out the spring potential energy in that spring. Then, part B, we're going to see what happens when we drag this mass down an extra 0.5 meters. But first things first, what is the extension? What is the force this mass applies on that spring? Because that'll be our F value. 10 kilograms in VCE physics, that's 100 newtons of force, mg, 10 times 10. So 100 is equal to k, that's 400, times x, getting x by itself. The extension of that spring caused by hanging the weight on it was 0.25 meters. So while the mass is currently sitting at 0.5 meters height off the ground, this spring, before we hung that mass on it, had natural height 0.75 meters. And that doesn't mean the spring is 0.75 meters long, it means it sat at that level like that. How much spring potential energy or strain potential energy is in that spring? Well, the spring potential energy is equal to a half kx squared. So us is equal to a half 400. Now we know x, we can work this out. 0 0.25 squared. That comes to I have 12.5 joules. So there's 12.5 joules of spring potential energy contained in that spring. That means if we suddenly turned off gravity, that mass would accelerate upwards. And by the time it passed that magical level there, the natural level of the spring, it would have 12.5 joules worth of kinetic energy. As it is, gravity is holding everything stationary for now. Let's see what happens when we drag this mass down to this level here. So I'll sketch that to the right there. 10 kilograms. No, that spring. It's going to be the same spring. There we go. Okay, if we drag it down there and release it, what will be the kinetic energy of the box here as it passes this point here? And then what is the velocity? 
Let's figure that out. As it moves up there, the spring potential energy will decrease. And as the spring potential energy decreases, that's going to add to the kinetic energy. So the spring potential at the very bottom here is equal to a half k times x squared. That would be 0.75 squared since we're moving down from 0.75 uh, the spring has been stretched from its natural length of 0.75 here to 0, which is equal to 0.5 times 400 times 0.75 squared, 112.5 joules. So the change in spring potential energy is the difference between this value here and this value here. That would be 100 joules. If you weren't thinking very clearly, you might suggest that the box, by the time it reaches this point here, will have gained 100 joules of kinetic energy. That would be incorrect because you're ignoring the fact that there's another type of energy involved. What have we accounted for? We've accounted for spring potential, we've accounted for kinetic energy, that's the thing we think is increasing, but we haven't accounted for that gravitational potential energy. As that box moves up to this height here, which we're very interested in, it gains gravitational potential energy, which, su which draws from that spring potential energy. So let's figure out the change in gravitational potential energy. So we'll say the spring potential energy goes down by 100 and the gravitational potential energy goes, that's m g delta h, that is 100 times 0 0.5 of 50 joules. So spring potential is going down by 100. Gravitational potential is going up by 50. So what's happening? is we're taking energy out of spring potential and putting it into gravitational potential and kinetic. If gravitational potential goes up by 50, spring potential goes down by 100, kinetic energy must go up by 50 to keep everything equal. So the kinetic energy of the box when it reaches this point here is 50 joules and 50 joules is equal to a half mv squared which is equal to a half 10v squared 50 divided by 5v equals the square root of 10 so 50 divided by 0.5 divided by 10 equals 10 divided by 0.5 v is equal to 3.16 meters per second as it passes this point here and we can also find the max height the box will reach after being pulled down to that point there. The max height will occur when the box ends up, I'll just move this over, somewhere up here. Because we expect it to spring up, pass that point and then turn around up here. At this point here, we expect the kinetic energy to be zero. Since the box, we do know, has to turn around at that point. If the kinetic energy is zero, then all the other energy has to be tied up in spring potential and gravitational potential. So let's figure that out. The max point there, EK is zero, US, is equal to yeah, that's a bit tricky to work out this way let me think for a second no it's too difficult to work out with this method but I'll show you in a second a method to work it out 
you can assume that if the spring is sitting at this level of 0.5 and you draw it down 0.5 this way, it'll spring up to a maximum of 0.5 in the other direction, which is ultimately a height of one meter. Let's look at a simpler method for solving this type of question. Once the spring has been extended by a weight which is being acted on by gravity, you can pretty much ignore the fact that there's already some kinetic, uh, sorry, spring potential energy in the spring and treat it as a new spring with extension so far of zero. But the K value remains the same. So when we draw it down to this point here, and, and you can pretty much ignore gravity uh, when it comes to this. When we draw it down to this point here, the amount of spring potential we could, we could say go into, goes into our theoretical new spring is equal to a half times 400 times 0.5 squared, which is equal to 50 joules. And then when that spring is released and the box races up to that point there, it'll have 50 joules worth of kinetic energy. You can choose to ignore gravity in this situation if you also assume that the extension there is zero. That's a little trick uh, I picked up from uni physics.